Welcome everyone to the Class Insights Podcast. I'm Kyle Chilton, a Senior Insights Director here at Class. I'm joined by Jackson Tate, a Research Director over all pharmacy solutions that we measure here at Class. Uh, welcome, Jackson. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, so we've been talking a lot this season about what's happening in different spaces, kind of emerging, what's new. Uh, so tell us maybe just what what do you measure? What do we measure here at Class as it relates to pharmacy? No, that's a great starting question. So there's a lot of legacy technology in in pharmacy, uh, as you can imagine. There's a lot of hardware that's associated with storing medication, um, transporting it, those sorts of things, uh, making sure that it gets uh, to the patient in safe manner. So we measure things like smart pumps, uh, automated dispensing cabinets, robotic carousels. Um, and then there's a lot of software that goes into managing those, those inventory levels, managing uh, how folks are buying, how folks are taking advantage of programs like 340B. Uh, so that covers like medication inventory management, drug diversion, IV workflow management, those sorts of, those sorts of things. So um, it's pharmacy, it's, it's an interesting space because it is such a kind of a legacy space for hospitals. It's such a, what's the word, cost center that's been, associated, that's been around for so long. Yeah. But there's a lot of new innovation. There's lots of folks looking and saying, hey, can things be better? Can, what are the things that, that can be optimized through using either software and sometimes even hardware as well? Yeah. Um, so it's an exciting space to be in. Yeah, so it seems like you know this is a space where there's a lot of money exchanging hands, right? Mm -hmm. with, with the purchasing of drugs and all that kind of stuff, Absolutely. and equipment. And then obviously this touches the patient directly, right? Like the drugs flowing into the patient and all yeah. of that. So there's there's a lot of uh, potential for for error, I guess, and that and those mm -hmm. kind of errors can be can be uh, really really. Fatal, I guess, in some cases. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely an area where there's a lot of risk, especially when you yeah. look at things like hazardous drugs, like chemotherapy drugs. There's yeah. there's so many nuances to how do you how do you get the right medications and the right levels in the right place, and then getting it to the patient in a in a safe manner. So there's lots of lots of juggling that has to happen, and it's not just pharmacy departments that are involved in it. Yeah. It's it's safety department, it's the quality department, it's the nursing, it's IT, it's biomed. There's all these different departments that have a stake in making sure that the right medications get to the right patient at the right time yeah. and via the right avenue. So it touches a lot of different parts of the health system. Absolutely. What dynamics are influencing this space right now? Well, as you can imagine, the current economic situations yeah. are causing folks to really look at what they have and say, okay, can we be better? And a lot of that comes down to where, th where can they turn an ROI? So the biggest kind of new areas that we are hearing a lot about are, are more directly tied to that ROI. Okay. So saying, hey, you know, we've got buyers who have a very manual process of going and saying, hey, here are the NDCs I'm in charge of restocking. I always buy from, from this NDC, from this wholesaler, from under this contract. And they just get into these processes because it's what they know. Yeah. But what they sometimes can't see is, okay, well, given the specific contract that we have with X, Y, and Z wholesaler, X, Y, and Z supplier, there may be a better pricing option. Or, hey, we need to buy more under this contract with this GPO so that we can meet our, our uh, levels so that they get better pricing once they hit a certain volume of drugs yeah. that are ordered. So, so there's a lot of uh, investment going in right now into software and analytics that can help automate some of these human processes that allow for lack of optimization, leakage, lost revenue or lost savings. So that's that's yeah. a that's a lot of what I've been focusing on in the last, you know, 9 months or so. I know we've we've done several reports on solutions that that really help in this space. Mm -hmm. Um you know, BlueSight, Trula, um Quicksort, Quicksort. RX. We got one coming up on Verity Solution yeah. Verisave, yeah. So without getting into, you know, the specifics of each one, we can talk about though that, you know, they have they, these solutions do save a lot of money. Like mm -hmm. they, they they help find the right the best deal that makes the most sense for the specific facility, and they're able to save a lot of money for them. Yeah, yeah. The initial response from customers has been really positive, and the the outcomes realization, the results ha have been speaking for themselves more times than they haven't. So it's yeah. it's been uh, really good to see that there is technically technology out there that is going to 
make a difference in improving the bottom line for these health systems. Yeah. And is that freeing up people to kind of do other things because it's automating some of the processes or? I would say probably more of the sense is that it's highlighting a lack of optimization okay. that wasn't known before. So yes, it does automate some of the, the people's workflows, but yeah. more so it's more saying, hey, you were doing things this way before. Um, here's how you can be better yeah. now. So it's kind of uncovering an un unhidden uh, need yeah. versus something that was just, oh, we're having to sink tons of man hours into this right now. And I think one of the things I read too is that it helps kind of audit, or audit the contracts a little bit to make sure that things are are. Yeah, it does help. It does help with uh, just making sure that that they are getting the most out of their contracts. I don't yeah. know necessarily that you could say. I don't know the audit would Not be the term. Audit, that, yeah, but um, something to the effect of making sure that you're optimizing the, yeah. those contracts that you have with wholesalers and suppliers, making sure that, that you are doing appropriate, helping with the 340B accumulation. They're not, they're not taking the place of the 340B vendors, the TPAs, yeah. um, but they're helping with managing some of the, hey, w are we doing the right 340B accumulations yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so it's it's exciting to see kind of a new, somewhat of a new kind of solution out there. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see over the next couple of years you know, what benefits are, are providers and payers continuing to get from these solutions? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Well, and, and it's interesting because pharmacy has been so historically viewed as a cost center for health, for health systems. Um, there's even talk of new technology that's coming in to maximize reimbursement on medications that are being prescribed by the health system. So, okay. so is it the right drug that will be optimally reimbursed by the patient's payer, by the patient's insurance? Um, is it going at the right location where you know, you're getting the most bang for their buck. So there's, there's, it's not just, hey, how do we limit our costs in terms of pharmacy and medications? There's, there's talk about technology that's coming out that will help improve revenues that are directly associated with pharmacy. What pressures are they feeling kind of in this, in the pharmacy space to obviously, you know, saving money, you know, yeah, optimizing economic some impact. of these things, the economic impact, but what other pressures are there? So as you can imagine, much like other parts of the health systems in America, the staffing shortages continue to make pharmacy challenging. Um, turnover in technicians, uh, turnover in pharmacists, that, that is, continues to be a challenge for, for sure. uh, pharmacy departments. Um, and really what it's caused uh, from a technology investment perspective is, hey, are there things that can help um, automate or, or standardize some of our workflows. So you look at technology like IV workflow management. Okay. Uh, whenever someone at class who doesn't know that space comes to me and says, hey, what is IV workflow management? I'm like, there's a lot more to it, but imagine that you're trying to make cookies for the first time without any sort of a recipe, um, and you just kind of hear word of mouth. It's hard to replicate that over and over, especially as you know turnover happens. For sure. But if you have a solution that says, hey, here is the recipe for cookies. Here is the first step you should take. Here's how much flour you should have. Here's how much sugar. That helps you to automate those processes so that as turnover happens, whether unusually high given the current economic environment or under normal circumstances, there can be less variation in what actually is the end result. What is the end result of those IV bags that are being sent out to uh, patients? So that's one piece that, that comes into uh, effect. Um, there's investment going into uh, solutions like drug diversion monitoring okay. um, because, you know, as staff is coming in and they bring in traveling nurses, there are more unknown actors who are handling controlled substances, your, your opioids, things yeah. like that, that you really want to keep a close eye on. Um, and so having systems in place to help monitor behavior, uh, particularly for pharmacy, drug diversion is a, a top priority. Uh, we still continue to see a lot of investment in solutions that are focused around, again, using some sort of analytics and software to automate an otherwise human-driven and maybe unoptimized process of, hey, let's go just look at everyone's transactions and try and figure out who's an outlier, who's not. Yeah. Can we reconcile that with, hey, this person's prescribing more, but they're also getting the most amount of prescriptions that are for controlled substances because of they work in anesthesia or 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 right. things like things of that nature. So, so um, yeah. So I would say the other main thing beyond just kind of the economic environment is that staffing uh, yeah. staffing issues. So, what kind of outcomes are we seeing from these solutions right now? That we're you know, what are what are the customers saying about them? So we, we know yeah. what they can do or at least what they say they can do. What what kind of outcomes are we seeing? I would say that that for the most part, we're we're seeing that they are tracking along with the goals that customers are are needing from them. 
Um, on the IV workflow management side, um, there are kind of a, there's kind of a divide between gravimetric solutions and non-gravimetric solutions. Okay. So that's maybe a little bit more of a de decision point for some organizations to say, hey, the solution I have does leverage gravimetric analysis to say, hey, I actually infused the right amount of this drug into this IV bag because it's going to weigh it at the end of the day and say, right. okay, the densities line up. Um, but, but I mean, other than that distinction factor, there's a lot of folks who are saying that things are, are mapping to their needs and, and helping them, again, to, to get that standardization of workflow. Because yeah. the technician has to go through, check the right boxes, take pictures of, of their work that ultimately gets checked by the pharmacy director or whoever's the, the uh, residing over the pharmacy and say, yep, that's good to go. Uh, and then in the diversion space, um, they're, they're, that's a newer space. I mean, definitely for class, but it's sure. relatively newer to the industry. It's been around for you know twenty plus years. Um, there's been a, a, a not a resurgence. What's the right word? An emergence of new vendors, new capabilities, leveraging uh, AI, analytics, machine learning to say, okay, let's let's optimize some of these processes that were more yeah. autom that were more manual before. Um, and we have seen some some good results there. I think that there's we're starting to get to that point where when there's brand new technologies that come to the market, often it's, hey, we're so glad that we're not doing it the way that we used to, that everything's great. Now we're kind of getting to that point where, hey, I would like to be able to do more with this than I currently am. Right. And there's starting to become some lines between, okay, this vendor can do this, this vendor can do this. Um, who's furthest down the path of development of these technologies? So, and, and hospitals are having to learn new diversion practices. They're having to learn and set yeah. up programs to say, okay, this is really sensitive information. When you find someone who, it, it's hard with technology to say definitively this person is diverting. You can say they are very much at risk for diversion. We're seeing patterns. We're seeing things. patterns, yeah. And, and, and a lot of the time that could potentially be explained away by just saying, hey, I forgot or I didn't realize. And so you have to have a human element to look at the data and look at the patterns and say, this is something that was re repeated after correction, or hey, this is something that really was a challenge, or, or, or this is someone who um, is continuing to do things despite correction, despite all this, and then being able to say from a human side, yep, this is definitely diversion. It, it's, not a, it's not a technology only solution. You need yeah. a human element. So if you don't have a robust diversion management program around the technology and you're just saying, hey, I need the software to really make make a difference. I'll, we're seeing a lot of organizations really struggle to say, yep, we are finding diversion, we are preventing diversion. That's really interesting. I think, you know, you, you touched on, you know, when, when there's a new solution or a new a new product, maybe the initial reaction is, hey, this is great. Like we're getting, this is new, this is something we've never done before. Yeah. But a year, two, three in, it's like, okay, now what? Like, what are you doing for me now? Yeah. Are you, have you communicated a roadmap? Are you delivering on that roadmap? And that's where we t tend to see kind of the, 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 the ones that have done that, that have really developed and are innovative, they tend to, to stay ahead and, mm -hmm. and tend to win more customers. So really, really interesting to see where this will go in the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and that's what I would say, especially for a space like pharmacy, that when you think of pharmacy as a whole, it's not like telehealth where it's a relatively newer concept from a from an org structure sure. standpoint people tend to be entrenched in what they do so if you aren't innovating to say here is a new better way to do things people will will often kind of say well i want it to do what i've always done yeah so so it, it is uh technology vendors are having to strike that balance yeah. between hey we are really developing and 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 really driving the market forward versus meeting customers kind of where they're at and their the workflows that they've always had. Yeah, and that's it's another, a change yeah. management issue. That's, that's, that's a huge trend we see too. It's like this, here's a solution that maybe can do something great, but if it makes the job harder for the technicians and the pharmacists, yeah. they're much less likely to adopt it just because they have so much to do with staffing issues. It's going to be harder to implement something if, unless it's easy to implement yeah. and do. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, Let's talk about the importance of having solutions kind of across the care continuum um, of customers. Mm -hmm. Like, what what are you seeing there? What's what's important? What's 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 new? And what's what should people be aware of? Currently, the majority uh, and almost all of the research that we do that are focused around pharmacy solutions are focused on 
health systems that have an acute care arm. And as you can imagine, they are having to meet more patients where they're at in ambulatory sites, retail pharmacies, things of that nature. So, so there's definitely a conversation saying, hey, how do we do more uh, across the care continuum in our, in our alt sites, our non-acute sites? Yeah. Uh, it, so it's incredibly important, but it's also incredibly tricky. So like uh, a great example is like the automated dispensing cabinets, which are the main housing mechanism for the storage mechanism for medications within a hospital. Right. It's a great way to, to, to track and say, okay, how much inventory do I have on stock? Because each of the drawers where each of the medications are stored, um, they are, it's automated. They, they only allowed to take out a certain amount of medication. So there's, there's a lot more safeguards around um, essentially inventory tracking for that space. Um, but it doesn't always make sense to put an automated dispensing cabinet in like a retail site or a, 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 just a, a family care practice that may okay. have some medications on stock. So how do you automate and really do a good job of tracking uh, the medication levels that are in these non-acute spaces? Um, so a lot of folks are trying to say, hey, we just need to keep manual counts of what's on our shelves. I mean, that gets tricky. Um, because you need a, yeah. you need high compliance with practices. And again, that's a change management issue. Right. You've got nurses and physicians that are just used to saying, hey, we've got so much on stock, I just let people know when we're running low, like the, or whatever their practices are. I'm not saying that's the general trend, but but when you go from, hey, there's it's a little bit more just up to you, try and do your, do your best versus we need to automate workflows or, or have more standardization of workflows. Yeah. It's a change management issue to say, hey, you need to go to the computer and, and say, we have gotten, I'm taking this much off for, uh, for this patient and then have that track back into your inventory management system. So it, it's, a, it's a balance that, that health systems are trying to say, what's the right way to do it that leverages both technology in an efficient way, um, but and also doesn't just completely put out uh, the, the providers as well. Yeah, um, force them to learn a completely new way of doing things. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And there is some talk about um, using, I don't know what the official term is, but essentially image-based intelligence where it can have a camera that's looking at your inventory levels. Oh, okay. And yeah. would be able to say, okay, I'm identifying these bottles as this medication, these bottles as this medication. Right. And, and from there, able to track what's on your open shelves like that. That would be something that would really be revolutionary for yeah. for ambulatory sites that are trying to keep a lot of medications on hand, and for a health system who's trying to say, how do we better manage our inventory levels across the care continuum? Kind of the the goal with the care continuum is how do we make sure we keep a track of where all of our medications are so that we can have optimal levels of each of those regardless of, of location, time of year. Uh, that, that it's, it's, still a pro, it's still a work in process, yeah. I would say right now, a work in progress, but it's, it, there's a good goal there, a very we, noteworthy goal. Are we seeing any, any vendors, anyone kind of stepping up to try to figure this problem out? I think that the vendors are trying to solve this problem and, and it's, I would say probably for us right now, it's a little bit difficult to, to get to that because again, most of our research is focused on the health system. But sure. as we're talking with these, um, like the, the system pharmacy directors or VPs of pharmacy, chief pharmacy officers who do have that overall view, you do see them start to mention that uh, they are utilizing some technology from like BD, from uh, OmniCell in some cases, from Epic uh, to, to monitor that um, and say, hey, Let's get a better handle on it. I don't think that, to, again, to that note about like using uh, image intelligence mm -hmm. to, to really get a more automated tracking system on it, um, the, that level hasn't quite been attained, but there's more of, hey, how do we use some of our inventory systems that we have to give them resources to track their inventories at these non acute yeah. sites? So, so things like that are, are definitely coming up more and more. Interesting. So it'll be up to kind of that, that change management process to get those yeah. Not acute sites to adopt some of those practices exactly. while hopefully there's other development happening that can make things yep, that exactly. much easier. Yeah. Exactly. So and and so there's a lot of I I, I would say this space is a high priority for most vendors. Yeah. Um because again, the hospital from a business standpoint, the hospital market's fairly saturated yeah. in terms of technology adoption. So where is their greenfield? You're look at that point you're looking at behavior behavioral health, post acute, long term care all these different uh, sites where they do need at least some medications on hand. How do you help them in a way that's gonna be meaningful and, and cost effective, 
help them manage the medications that are out there. And then also give that health system a top-down view of all of that. Right. So kind of that to that anecdote you shared, they know what medications they have and where they are exactly. and so they're easy to access and can get them at a moment's exactly. notice. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So we've talked to, there's obviously a lot of like, um, I guess third party vendors or whatever that, that do their thing, but then there's obviously the EMR vendors that are kind of, kind of across the, the health system doing a lot of different things. What are we seeing from the EMR vendors in this space, in the pharmacy space? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, so I, in, don't, I definitely want to speak about the EMR vendors in general, but obviously each EMR vendor is going to have a different approach to sure. how things are going with, with regards to pharmacy. So I would say most, if not all, EMR vendors have some sort of a pharmacy solution developed that's meant for like order management. So as <clears throat> physicians put in an order, that order is sent to pharmacists who can see it on their end. And, and so all of them have that, that, or all if not most have that baseline of technology. Um, there are some vendors that are coming in and saying, hey, um, we want to, or their customers are saying, we need you to automate more of our uh, inventory levels and our, our pharmacy surveillance, things of that nature, our antimicrobial stewardship, um, which deals with the prescribing of uh, antibiotics. Yeah. So um, there, there definitely is some, some folks saying, hey, it would be nice if this was all just on one system. We're already leveraging the heck out of our EMR. What can we do more? Or we have gaps in our current technology stack. What can our EMR possibly do uh, in place of yeah. this? And, and there's always that discussion of, hey, is what the EMR doing truly apples to apples? Or is it just good enough for now? And that's the decision that a lot of health systems are having to make is, is it, is it a good investment to move forward with the EMR vendor given the hope that things will continue to develop over time? Now, the EMR vendors are definitely not nearly as focused yeah. in the pharmacy space, so their development efforts are spread over, as you can imagine, all the different spaces. They're getting yeah. pulled 10 million directions. Yeah, definitely. So, so they have resources that are being dedicated to these spaces, um, but it's, not, it's definitely not like, oh, this is the top priority. Yeah. So, so they have, they have other, other fish to fry, cybersecurity, things of that nature. Yeah. So it sounds like a similar story that we see in other spaces, right, that where the EMR... They might have modules and tools that you can use, but yeah. a best in breed vendor could probably is, might be a little more developed. Yeah. But then there's a the question of integration and another another vendor. So mm -hmm. it's that same, I guess, song and dance that CIOs have to play at figuring out. Absolutely. Well, and, and it's and oftentimes it becomes I don't want to say political, but it can kind of become political between sure. the department level and the and the IT department because IT department would like to have to manage fewer interfaces, manage fewer kind of cybersecurity endpoints. Mm -hmm. And so if if they can standardize, it definitely lessens their workload sure. from, from that vantage point. But you have the department levels who are saying, hey, we are missing on X, Y, and Z functionality, or we prefer the workflow. So very similar to what we've seen from spaces like lab and emergency department in the past. Yeah. And so that will be really the big question is, and, and I, I should also say, I don't think there are, there are many, if any, of these EMRs who are looking at getting into the endpoint technologies, like the cabinets or the carousels. That hardware is, yeah. as you can imagine, it's a pretty big barrier to entry. But what they're generally looking at is what software pieces can we automate? What sort of data and analytics can we bring in-house that would be useful for folks? And how does that have synergies with the current, like the clinical records or the financial uh, revenue cycle side? Uh, where are there synergies where it makes sense to look at data both from a inventory level plus a patient need level? Because they have all that data, what can they leverage? So, yeah. so you're seeing some folks in the EMR space uh, definitely ex expand uh, their presence in a number of pharmacy-related areas. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Well, thanks, Jackson, for joining us. Uh, appreciate having Jackson, our research director over pharmacy here at Class All Pharmacy Solutions. Uh, we had a great conversation today about all the different uh, development we're seeing in the pharmacy space, uh, tools that can help save save money on drugs and help just better manage the, that process of uh, pharmacies and all the different drugs that they have to buy and purchase and dispense um, and, and tools that can help with the, the safety and the, the regulation of all those things. So thanks, Jackson, for joining us. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to tune in to our next episode and uh, find the Class Insights podcast wherever you find your podcasts.